Hi everybody, this is Pete, and today you're watching the Camera Lucida 8.0 Introductory Tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up your drawing surface and how to get started using the app to make your first drawing. I'll also walk through as many of the features as possible. To begin, you need to set your iPhone or your iPad over a drawing surface. I've shown you how to do this in some other videos, but in this case, all I did was to take a board from Home Depot and mount a threaded rod to it, put a platform up there, and place my iPad on top of it. It's really that simple. You just need a way to have the iPad looking down at your drawing surface. Once you have your iOS device in place, then you need to run the actual application. As soon as you run it, you're presented with this splash screen and some menus down below. The one on the left lets you pick a photograph from your camera roll. The one next to it lets you take a photo. Then you have buttons for drawing, saving an image if you've rotated, cropped, or zoomed it, and then a specialized rotation feature. So the first thing we're going to do is to pick an image from our camera roll, and I will pick this photograph of Jenna Coleman, who you might know from Doctor Who. Now as soon as you do that, the camera starts running in the background, and that allows you to pinch and zoom your image and to place it exactly where you want it. So I might want to place it over there. Let's say there's a cookie on my table. If you want to compose and composite several different images, this is a really handy feature to be able to see what's underneath it. As you move it, it becomes transparent until you release it. I'm going to fill up the screen here. And then when I'm happy with my composition, I can hit the Save button. And that Save button will take a snapshot and save it in your camera roll so that if you want to start drawing that exact image again with the zoom and cropping features that you've set, you can do so. So now let's actually go into the draw mode. When you go into the draw mode, the menu changes a little bit. All of a sudden down at the bottom, you have this slider. The slider adjusts the amount of transparency between your drawing surface and the image that you're trying to draw. Just like that. At any time, you can double tap to zoom in on your image or drag the image. And when you drag the image, it drags the camera and the photograph, keeping them in perfect alignment all the time. Double tapping, if you're zoomed in, will zoom you back out. Now you've also got a couple other features here. One of these is a focus button. This focus button in the upper right hand corner, if you push it, will tell the camera to focus once and lock the focus. That way if your hand goes underneath the camera, the focus doesn't constantly change focusing on your hand as you move around. Now it's focused exactly on that pen that I've got down there. Other features include a menu here in the toolbox that shows you all kinds of image processing techniques that you want to be able to, to use. And as you pick them, it shows you a live preview of what the image will look like. Now I happen to like the posterize function because the posterize function converts the image into shades of gray. And the shades of gray are really helpful if you're trying to really get the darks dark and the brights bright. And sometimes it's a lot easier to have the computer figure out where the brightest and the darkest places are. You can also select how many shades of gray you want. So if you wanted 16 shades of gray, you can go 16. I usually pick around six. Well, maybe nine. There we go. Okay, so once I've got that selected, I can then tap on the screen at any time and just start drawing. But I better set my transparency down, otherwise I can't see it. There we go. So let me do a little bit of sketching so that you can see what it's like to actually watch the image appear on paper. To begin the drawing, I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to line it up looking at the iPad screen. Not at the piece of paper, but actually at the iPad screen here. And I'll start drawing. I'll always start with the eyes because if you don't get the eyes right, you basically don't have a good drawing. And what I can do, because I actually see the shades of gray here, is I can start shading in the very darkest spots first, just because I want to be able to lay down those reference points. Everybody draws differently. I'm using, in this 
particular case, a graphite pencil. And see how I laid those down by pushing down hard on my pencil. And now I'm going to go in the other spots and push down just not quite as hard. As you become more advanced, you get a feel for how hard you have to push down. Now some people also talk about the fact that there's a little bit of lag between when the camera sees your hand and when your eye sees your hand or when the movement actually occurs. What I've found is that within a few minutes, usually just seconds actually, you start to kind of ignore that. Your, your mind shuts it off and your brain compensates and that lag no longer exists. So all I'm doing here is where there's dark spots, I'm just pushing down a little more heavily than where there's light spots. And let's not call it anything other than what it is. I am tracing this image. Some people use this to trace designs on top of cookies, and they'll do it in an edible marker, and then they'll pipe frosting around that and then fill it in with royal icing. And it works really well. The paper that I'm using, I actually got from a yard sale it's old drawing paper, and it's so old that it's faded in color. It's, I mean, not faded, it's actually darkened. And what's cool about that is that you can then add highlights if you want. So like, see, I'm actually shading this in right now. And if I wanted to, I could come in here with this white pencil and whiten that up. I don't know how that's going to look. Looks kind of cool to me. Okay. Now, drawing is a very personal thing. If you are a classic artist, maybe you're going to take this drawing and you're going to take your pencil strokes and you're going to hash like this. There are a lot of techniques for following the contours, for really making the drawing personal and making it yours. But you get the idea here. If I come in here, this shaded area, just do some rough hatching like that. Then I can take this transparency, let me slide it, and you can see the drawing that I've already started to create. I'm zoomed in, there it is, zoomed out. Uh, at any time you can set the transparency back here. Now I could do the entire drawing this way, but let me show you some of the other great features of the app. The first thing that you can do here is at any time you can reset to original. That'll set it back to the exact image that you started at. You can do other things like when you posterize, which converted into shades of gray, you can pick the shade of gray, let's just say six in this case. And then you can go and you can use the levelize function. Now the levelize function shows you just one shade of gray. So if I pick the very first one, what it's gonna do is it's gonna show you just the very darkest blacks and everything else is going to be transparent. So if you had a black marker, you could come in here. Oh, I do have a black marker. I have a Sharpie. And you could come in and you could actually ink the darkest spots and then pick something that isn't as dark for the second. There's the second shade of gray. There's the third shade of gray. And because it's transparent, there's nothing in your way. And again, at any time, you can just make the entire interface disappear. That's the basics of the app, but let me show you a few more features. In this particular slider here, you've got some other things you can do, like here's a color comic book feature. And what that does is it reduces the color palette and it actually finds all of the spots where there's some edge. And it really does make it look like a color comic book. That's a great feature if you've got watercolors or pastels and you wanna create a really artistic view of your drawings, your drawing. There's some other things here like mirroring. You can add, add a large grid. You might not be able to see it here, but that grid is embedded in the image now. And you can use that to create reference marks so that if you want to come back to your drawing later on, you can do that. Some of the other features, there you go, now you can see the grid a little better. 
Some other features, including things like adding corner, ticks, mirroring, you can change it to black and white. And because these effects are stacked on top of one another, you can mix and match them in a variety of ways. Like if I reset to original here, and then I go to sepia tone, and then I do a, uh, a black and white threshold once, I get this, just the black. I can always black and white threshold it again. You get the idea. I probably shouldn't spend so much time on this. But it's fun. It's fun to look at all the different things that you can do and the approaches that you can take to making your art. Okay, now Camera Lucida 8.0 also brings a few other features that you access by hitting this button right here. The first is a flashlight. Now my iPad doesn't have a flashlight, so there's, there's no switch there because, well, my iPad doesn't have a flashlight. But if you had an iPhone, it would turn on the light and it would light your surface perfectly for you. Another cool feature is this vertical slider, which I call the Vermeer slider. And what it allows you to do is to slide back and forth so that you can come in here and you can match the intensity or the color of the spot right next to it absolutely perfectly. If you're not good with shades of gray, you can immediately see here that my shade of gray is not as dark as this shade of gray. Okay, I'm not that good at shades of gray, obviously, otherwise I would have made it blacker. But it's a really great feature that's new with version 8.0. Now, there's even some more things. There's a flicker function down here, and the flicker function allows you to fade in and out as you're going along and drawing. Now what's really great about the flicker function is that as you're drawing, if you actually get the color match or the shades of gray match just right, you'll actually sort of see the flicker effect go away because the drawing surface will be equal to the actual reference image. So it'll feel like it stops flickering. Now you can change the flicker rate to be an obnoxious tenth of a second, turn that off, or to be much, much slower. So this would be just a very, very slow fade that I've got here now set for almost three seconds. All right, there are a few more things, but the first thing I need to show you is a record button. If you select this record button right here, up in the upper right hand corner, you get a record button. And that record button, when you start hitting it, will make an actual screen recording of your drawing in, pro in process. So let come right down here and I'll start doing this nose. Now as I do this nose, everything that I'm doing is being saved to a video file. And I'll try to post some of my, my videos of doing this. In the settings page, you have the option of deciding whether or not you want to have the user interface, which is all the menu features, being recorded into the video, or just have the drawing surface, what the camera is seeing added to the video. The default is to not show the user interface. So I'll pan that a little bit. When you hit the stop button, that video gets placed into your video album. Then you can post it to Facebook or do anything else that you want. It's a great way of sharing the work that you've done. Let's take a moment and look at the settings page for Camera Lucida because before I had absolutely nothing in there and now I have a lot of different settings. The first thing is a section for your video recordings. Over here you've got a little switch that decides whether or not you want that user interface embedded in the video recording that you've created. Like I mentioned, the default is off. You also have the ability to use the front camera rather than the rear camera. You can also mirror the front camera. Now why would you want to do that? Well, there's some really great devices that are coming out that should be able to make use of the front camera, and I'm really hoping that they're going to be able to be uh, compatible with the Camera Lucida application. Now, you've got another feature here, this camera quality versus lag. In the menu, you've got low, medium, high, and photo. And the default is photo, which means that the camera is always seeing the highest resolution possible. Now, because 
there is a little bit of lag between when you actually draw and when you see the drawing occurring on your iPad, and it's definitely just a few milliseconds. But it's noticeable to some people, and it depends upon the device you're using. You may want, if you're noticing lag, to set it down to medium, or maybe high. And what that will do is it'll reduce the quality, the resolution of the image that's being captured by the camera. And I've found that it can also reduce the lag. There's just less pixels that it needs to process. Down next, we've got these keyboard mappings. Now, a lot of people, when they want to be able to make a very large drawing, what they do is they set up their iPhone or their iPad looking at their drawing surface several feet away. But since they can't reach their drawing surface and look at the iPad at the same time, they will mirror the screen to their Apple TV or to their laptop. And when they do that, they then can use these features and a Bluetooth keyboard, a wireless keyboard, to be able to zoom in, pan left and right, adjust your transparency, and turn on the flicker. To do that, you just plug in and pair your Bluetooth keyboard, and you come in here and you set these values. They default to sort of a classic first-person shooter, AWS kind of setup. But you can come in here and make them any buttons that you want whatsoever simply by coming in here and then typing on your wireless keyboard the key that you want. And what we found is that since keyboards are a little bit different, if the keystrokes are not working, make sure that you actually enter in the keys here using your wireless keyboard. That way the key codes are exactly correct. Before I finish, I want to go over just one or two more minor things that you should know about. And the first is, is that a lot of people who have been using the interface have reported that when they go to draw, all of the menus are upside down. Well, you don't really want your menus upside down when you're drawing, obviously. And, and the way to handle that is when you're actually setting up your image and composing it, you want to make sure that your iPad orientation is in the orientation that it's going to be when you draw it. So make sure that in this case, the camera, which is over here, is pointing down right at the surface. Notice the, the rotation here, it's gonna rotate for you. If I, if I started the app like this, and I zoomed in, and then I hit the draw button, as soon as you hit the draw button, I lock the orientation so that moving the, moving the device around doesn't rotate things. And then if you try drawing that way, well, everything is sideways, and you don't want that to be the case. So. To fix that, just make sure that when you're composing your image, you've got your iPad put in the way that you want it to be when you're actually drawing. Now, the one other thing that I want to go over is if you have any questions whatsoever, any comments, if you need help, if you found a bug with the application, anything like that, just hit this I button up here. That I button, there we go. You would think typing or tapping an I button would be easy. That I button will bring up the help page. Here you can hit the contact support and it's going to bring up an email and it's going to email me directly. You can rate the app. You can watch some, tuto some tutorials and then that button will just remind you how to get to your settings page. If you hit the watch tutorials, it's going to bring you to this tutorial. So it'll open up a web page and it'll show you that tutorial and other tutorials that I might have created. And that's the best place to go and to watch all of the different things that I've created. Okay, so thank you very much for watching this and good luck with your drawings. Remember to join our Facebook group and share with us all of the different things that you've created. So this is Pete saying goodbye.